What if I told you that one of the most advertised brands on social media is actually run by members of the cult of Scientology? Teamy, teamy, teamy. This tea directly targets the toxins that are inside of your colon. That's the dangerous one. I don't call it dangerous, I call it magical. I just feel better. I feel amazing. It's literally a one-stop shop of health and just overall wellness. And of course, what do online influencers usually mean when they say wellness? Unreasonable weight loss results. Bye-bye calories, this will have you losing weight like crazy. So how does all this rapid weight loss happen? I don't know how to talk about this. There's not enough toilet paper in the world right now. Girl, you gotta go. I hate this. If you're not detoxing your body, you're just been accumulating toxins. Guys, that's that's not a thing. Our customers at Teamy, they're not nutritionists. They target people who don't know any better. I'm not that educated on health and wellness. What health questions do you have? Are you here with the Church of Scientology? Aside from Teamy's shady marketing, multiple former employees that I spoke with said that the CEO and her mother are devout Scientologists. The CEO also has deep connections in her family to Scientology that reach all the way up to its highest leaders with criminal pasts. If you're listening and looking, you can analyze a path to success. Just like Timmy Blends, Scientology has its own detoxification program. There was like gray stuff coming out of my skin. And I start stumbling and I can't walk. There is a culture within Scientology of not taking normal medication. It's saying that the doctor knows better than me. How could they? From the start, L. Ron Hubbard set out to attract celebrities. It's mind control. It's peer pressure. And it works, and that's the bottom line. That place is a f***ing cult. They force you to take business classes straight out of Scientology. People would have to face each other and say things like their partner doesn't want to marry them and hates them. The person sitting there had no idea that the room was being listened into. Ultimately, I was fired for speaking up. You are not allowed to be critical of the organization. Am I even a good boss? Should I even be a CEO? If that money is not in the box, you fail. You don't need to complain about those things. I am like a lot to deal with. I was literally destroyed every day at work. It was absolutely mentally abusive. So maybe there are abuses. I wouldn't tell anybody else that. Get your mugs out, cause we bout to guzzle, y'all. Before we start, y'all should know that I did invite Teamy Blends and its CEO to participate in this video, but a Teamy rep told me that the CEO Adi was not available because she's currently on maternity leave. Adi's mother, Sari Halevi, did not respond to my request for comment. Hey y'all, it's Mary, and in this episode, we're talking about Detox Tea Company Teamy Blends. Now, in case you've never heard of them, let me give you a quick introduction. So let me tell y'all something, right? You know when I eat a lot, I be looking like bloated for like two, three days, and then these rolls they be popping out, and I be like, oh my god, I hope they don't see any pictures. That's why I'm gonna do mother teeny. Hi guys, it's Patty Stanger, Millionaire Matchmaker. I have a new product I'm obsessed with and want to share with you. I love this new Teamy Vitamin C Serum. You guys, it's time to make my favorite drink ever, you guys. It's Teamy, and it's got 16 superfoods. You guys, you know I love the Teamy tea. Well. Now there's a detox mask. This is a game changer. And a game changer for me has been this teamy on the go smoothie maker. When I tell you guys this sh keeps the tea hot, it keeps that motherfucker hot. So smart, so fresh, so easy. I mean, teamy, you knocked it out of the park. I love it. I love this product. Mm. Love. <sighs> It's like, it's like a really bad version of QVC, you know? But, but the cringe is not even the worst part about Teamy. It's the fact that its best-selling product is a sketchy detox tea that's made claims with no science to back them up. So here's the deal. We're all toxic. There are actually toxins sitting in your colon right now. 10 to 15 pounds of excess weight that are just sitting there and they have been there for years from pizza and junk food. Enody says that the older you are, the more toxins have been accumulating in your body over the years. And those toxins are preventing you from losing weight and from feeling good. But Adi says that's where these two life-saving teas come in. The first tea is, of course, called Teamy Skinny. This tea boosts your metabolism, raises your energy, and suppresses your cravings. The second tea has the appetizing name of Teamy Colon. That's the dangerous one. 
I don't call it dangerous, I call it magical. This tea directly targets the toxins that are inside of your colon and it gets rid of that excess weight that's been sitting there. And you're gonna be pretty shocked. You're like, I didn't know that all of that was in there. And conveniently, Adi says that during the 30 days, you get rid of incrementally more and more toxins. I call it my magic tea. This magic tea comes with Timmy's best-selling product, their Detox Starter Kit. And let me tell you, magic ain't cheap, okay? This is a lot of coins, and so this tea better be working miracles. So, it says, let the journey begin. Ooh, ah. So, it came with two teas. One is the Teeny Skinny Tea. Oh, I didn't think I got this, but this is, oh God, this is what I got. This is what I got. It's the teeny colon tea. Girl, I, is this just gonna give me diarrhea? And then there's a note here from the co-founder and CEO. Through research, girl, are you gonna cite this research? Naturally removing these toxins completely solved my issues and I lost 10 pounds. I guess tomorrow is the start. Okay, good morning everybody, it's day one. I weighed myself this morning because I was like, she literally said all you gotta do is drink this tea and you'll lose weight. I'm kinda nervous. I mean, it tastes like tea that I've had. I'm feeling kind of hungry, which also feels weird because I thought the point of the tea was to be something that was gonna stabilize my metabolism, but it's day one. Okay, I'm just checking in on day two. Tonight, I take my first colon tea. Okay, when I tell y'all that this is the second time I've gone to the bathroom, my stomach hurts so bad. Like, if this is how it's gonna be every time, I, I'm not gonna make it 30 days. This is miserable. But I hate this. I hate this so much. Gonna be honest, this is my third time in the bathroom today. There's not enough toilet paper in the world right now for me to be going to the bathroom this frequently. I gotta be honest with you all. This colon tea is not it. No, mm-mm. I looked up the ingredients. Now the very first thing is senna leaf and root. And I said, I wonder what that is. Senna is an FDA approved over the counter laxative. Why, why would I do that? Why? Senna is a laxative that's supposed to be used for constipation. It works by stimulating these muscle contractions in your digestive tract. They start in your esophagus and they help push food down the esophagus and into your stomach. And then in your stomach, those contractions help break the food up into smaller pieces. And then in your intestines, those contractions push the food down into your bowels until you go to the bathroom, right? But if your digestive tract is already moving things down the pipes just fine, and then you add Senna to it, things could get out of control and you're probably gonna have diarrhea and some serious stomach cramps. But the worst part is that Timmy does not make it clear to its customers that if you take Senna for too long, your body can adapt to it. Your digestive tract can stop having muscle contractions on its own like it's supposed to because it's got the laxatives to do that for it. And then you become dependent on these laxatives to the point where you need them to even have a bowel movement your large intestine can actually become completely paralyzed and you might not have any warning signs before there's serious damage. This is why medical experts will tell you you should not take Senna for more than a week. But Timmy tells customers to drink its tea with Senna every other night for 30 days. And in this interview, Adi says there are women who do it back to back for three months or others who just do it when they've come back from vacation. Holy cow, did I need that honeymoon, but holy cow, I turned into a cow. Thankfully, I have my Teamy Blends Detox program to get me back on track. Teamy colon tips. Steep your teeny colon for one to three minutes, then remove it from the mug. Continuously increase the steep time gradually based on your body. The longer that it's in the water, the stronger it will be. So when I drink it, I leave it in the mug forever, 30 plus minutes, because my body's used to it. Obviously your body starts to become a little bit more tolerant to it and a little bit more tolerant to it. This stopped working for me like after like, I think two weeks. People that end up getting into laxative abuse really, really have a very difficult time stopping. And I'm gonna show you how true that is. I want you to listen to some people who have taken laxatives for years. Not necessarily Timmy's detox tea, I wanna make that clear, but laxatives in general for years. And I'm sure it won't shock anybody to find out that things didn't turn out well. Five years I've been abusing laxatives. The amount of laxatives that I take on a daily basis. I was using 
more than 10 times what I was supposed to be. I mean, I was taking 13 pills a day. Any amount less than the amount I was taking because I've been taking them for so long, I wouldn't go to the bathroom for days. I think at one time I went over two weeks without producing a bowel movement. The side effects of taking these laxatives daily. It is painful, painful, painful. My stomach was so, it was being ripped to shreds. Waking up the next day, you know, attached to the toilet. Literally going to the bathroom at least once an hour, if not way more frequently. My stomach does not know how to properly digest food because the laxatives force it through my stomach way too fast. A lot of the nutrients I was no longer getting, so I was getting sick. I had no immune system. I had like the common cold for, I think it was like 11 weeks. My chest was in pain all the time. I feel like I'm gonna faint when I stand up. At this point, I can no longer socialize with people. This became my life. And I always think, where I have to go for these pills, what time I'm gonna take them, calculating out when I have to work so I won't be sick at work. Each package was probably $25 and I was going through multiple packs a week. Knowing how much I spend, I can't even believe that I do it. It's just disgusting. Right now I'm really struggling financially, but it's an addiction. In those seven years that I abused laxative, I had tried multiple times to quit and I failed. I knew that I was damaging my body and I was afraid of how much worse it could get if I didn't stop. I'm like, okay, I either have to stop this or I will die from this. And these women are right to be worried. Laxative misuse can cause serious health problems, including irregular heartbeat, heart attacks, kidney failure, liver damage, fainting, seizures, it can even lead to death. Nobody should purposely be ingesting laxatives, and I hate myself that I didn't even look at the ingredients to begin with. I'm not that educated on health and wellness. I want something simple, and if I can, if I can give that to people, and it's tea and I know that it's going to help them, then I feel really good about what I'm doing and it's not costing them an arm and a leg. Maybe it won't cost them an arm and a leg, but it could cost them their colon because if you use laxatives for long enough and then your bowels give up and you have constipation that won't go away, unfortunately, usually surgery is the final choice. And the preferred treatment is a total colectomy, which means totally removing your colon. Then doctors redirect what's left of your digestive tract into a hole that they make in your stomach and then attach a bag to that hole called a colostomy bag. And that bag collects feces so that waste can actually leave your body. So if you want a super flat stomach, laxatives ain't the way to go. It's appalling to me that Timmy pitches this colon tea as something that is magical and super healthy when they don't clearly disclose that taking a laxative for too long can risk a dangerous dependence. But turns out dependence is great for business. If detox tea users find that they can't properly function without the tea, they are more likely to turn into repeat customers. Based on how many times you've completed your detox, we know what Timmy Blends product you need to have in your daily routine. If we had to rely on a colon cleanse or a colonic to be clean and detoxify, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble now, wouldn't we? As wow. you get older, if you're not detoxing your body, you're just been accumulating toxins. Wow. And when you turn 40, you've been accumulating toxins for 40 years. Wow. Guys, that's, that's not a thing. That's just not a thing. When you have a bowel movement, you're getting rid of your stool. Stool doesn't stay in your intestines and start caking up and getting hardened, and it's not true. So how do I get toxins out of me? I've been stress eating fast food, and now there are evil little particles inside of me, and they're slowly killing me. Ah! The fact is, toxins aren't even a special type of chemical. It's just become a trendy buzzword. The truth is that anything can be toxic if you ingest too much of it. Eat too much vitamin C, that's a toxin. Should I do a cleanse? I hear people asking this question a lot. If you're hoping it will remove toxins from your body, that's just not gonna happen. If you ask any doctor, they'll tell you. Colon cleanses are damaging to your intestinal health and can even be dangerous. We don't need to cleanse our colon or anything else because we've got great organs that do this already. Our lungs, our kidneys, our bowels, they do just fine on their own. Like our liver is designed to take out toxins from our body. I don't need to myself every day to detox my body so I can lose 10 pounds. We see all the time celebrities hyping up, you know, detox teas and weight loss teas. But the truth is, it's all a bunch of BS. 
I'm gonna tell you, I think a lot of these wellness companies in general do not care about your health. They care about making money and they will tell you whatever scary lies they need to tell you to get your cash. And they're not the only ones because you won't believe the crazy claims that influencers make when they are paid to promote Timmy's products. Even though so many detox teas have laxatives in them and are promoted all over social media, it is a lot harder to find information about laxative abuse. If I search for the hashtag laxative abuse on Instagram, it's not gonna load posts immediately. Instead, it's gonna show me these resources where I can get support. And then if I want to show the posts, I can, but this content advisory stays at the top. However, if I search for detox tea, I've got over a million posts on it and they will load just fine without any warning about the risks. And of course, they all look like they're all about health and wellness. Here we've got heal with tea, but of course, it's really pitching a smoothie diet where you can lose possibly five to 12 pounds in the first week alone. Next, let's talk about YouTube where I have seen plenty of videos promoting Timmy's 30 day detox program that are monetized with ads from big name brands. YouTube's own policies on what's considered harmful and dangerous content tell creators not to post content that praises, glorifies, or encourages viewers to imitate eating disorders. And Google, you know damn well that laxative abuse is a type of purging for people with bulimia. So YouTube is not only allowing this content on its platform that promotes using laxatives in a way that's against medical guidance, and y'all know it could block this content if it wanted to, but what's even worse is that YouTube is actually profiting by suggesting these dangerous detox products and by allowing these detox videos to be monetized. And we've got the same situation going on with Google search. But what really drives me crazy about Timmy and about all these detox companies is that they market themselves as if they are so interested in your health and well being. Timmy is a company that focuses on having a healthier lifestyle by mixing teas, herbal ingredients, natural ingredients, plant based superfoods, vegan, GMO free. It's made without fillers and additives, 16 superfood ingredients to help you get better from the inside out. This year is all about self-love. Truly taking care of myself and exercising has changed everything for me. Teamy Blends has sponsored my 30-day detox challenge to help me get rid of toxins. Teamy says its skinny tea is FDA approved and is even safe for pregnant and nursing women. But that ain't true because on the product page it says these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and that's because detox teas are generally considered to be dietary supplements and the FDA doesn't approve dietary supplements. Now that is definitely not the only bogus claim that is being made about Timmy's products though. Some of the things that Timmy says that their 30 day cleanse does is improve gut health, improve sleep, and good skin and clear eyes, boost your natural energy, bloating and stuff like that. They really do help you with that bloating sh bro. And people feel better, they feel lighter, they have a better metabolism. Eliminate acne and clogged pores, suppress cravings. It's literally a one-stop shop of health, digestion, and just basically overall wellness. Does it do all of these things? Headaches, skin, mood, etc. There's no evidence that it does. But can we just be real for a second? Because Timmy likes to make a lot of health and wellness claims about its products, and it likes to use a lot of vague language, like gut health and reset and refresh yourself and cleanse, but is that just a way to make the products that they're selling seem really safe and natural? Because if you look at a lot of their posts, you might think what they're really selling is weight loss. We're shouting out our girl QB Love for her amazing Teamy transformation. She's down 20 pounds from doing our 30 day detox and continues to use it to maintain her weight loss. Can you believe she removed so many toxins from her body? before and after, check out some incredible Teamy Detox transformations. A 40 pound difference from the 30 day detox. Just a two week difference. Day one, day 30. Hashtag thank you Teamy. I'm super excited about today's video. I'm about to tell y'all something that is gonna take the guesswork out of everything you've ever thought about weight loss and it's going to propel your weight loss to the next level. And I am adopting this for like the rest of my life. Also, this tea is really good if you need like some quick um, weight loss at the last minute, if you have a wedding or prom. See, we really helped me in the process of losing my baby weight. I've lost weight. And they help you lose weight faster. I don't got time to eat motherfucking. 
working out. I know that's the way to go and everything, like work out, eat healthy. I don't got no time for that. Week one down seven pounds, but I did not work out last week. So this is mainly just the tea and obviously eating a well-balanced diet. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my before picture here. And then here is my after picture. And this is after 30 days. And I did not change my diet. So imagine the results that you would have if you did change your diet. People posting on Instagram, these people have their flat bellies, smiling with a little mug of tea, posing with this like, I need to get me some of this. My belly is gonna be like on fleek doesn't help with weight loss uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, the body absorbs most of its calories before substances actually even gets to the large intestines. So perhaps if you're getting rid of a lot of it, if you get on the scale before and afterwards, there may be a change in pounds. But is that really fat? Because that's what we're talking about when we talk about weight loss, right? It's really just dehydrating you. I knew it was water weight. I didn't care. I was less bloated and my weight was lower when I would weigh myself. I love that thin feeling you get from them. You don't look bloated, your stomach is thin, I could see my ribs more. My collarbone shows a bit more because there's no water being retained because it's all leaving your body through the laxatives. It would never be worth losing weight to feel like this. And honestly, thus far, I haven't lost any weight. This is dumb. This is dumb. If you want to lose weight, the best bet, even though it's unglamorous and not exciting, is exercise and eating a healthy diet. And even though Adi makes it seem like Timmy is the reason she's got a flat stomach, we can see that it looks like she has a very healthy diet, and she says she has a daily addiction to working out. But despite the fact that medical experts think that detox products like Timmy's Colon Tea are not at all a legit or safe way to lose weight, that hasn't stopped influencers across the internet from pushing Timmy's products and collecting big fat endorsement checks in the process. Y'all, Kylie was paid $1 million for this one post, according to the Daily Mail. Can someone explain to me why Kylie Jenner is a billionaire, but still feels the need to sell weight loss tea on her Instagram? Really utilizing your 112 million follower platform, honey. And trust me, these influencers are making money from these posts. Why else would they be promoting these products again and again and again? Here's Lisa Renna, for example, promoting Timmy back in 2016. And y'all, it feels like every time Timmy comes out with a new product, Lisa is out there saying it's her new favorite thing. Even Sarah Palin has plugged Timmy multiple times online. Y'all, this woman was almost the vice president of the United States, and here she is talking about how she's a proud Timmy partner and how she drinks Timmy tea every morning. I love it, and I'm not just saying that because it was sent to me. It's delicious. Y'all, this is the exact face I make when I've just tasted something really delicious. I would drink tea me to help me curb my appetite so I could get my butt a f stomach looking back like I used to look when I was a stripper, and this is how I've been looking. Cardi got called out hard after this post by an actress named Jamila Jamil, who said they got Cardi B on the laxative nonsense detox tea. God, I hope all these celebrities all sh their pants in public, the way the poor women who buy this nonsense upon their recommendation do. But Cardi clapped back at Jamila, tweeting, I will never sh my pants because there's public bathrooms everywhere, ambushes. Then Jamila said she will never sh her pants because she probably doesn't ever take the product she promotes. During her promotional video, she keeps looking at the name of the product on the cup almost as if she's never seen it. And speaking of Cardi not using the product, I spoke with a former Teamy employee who spilled some tea on this situation. They said that Cardi was pregnant during one of their deals with her and she was supposed to take a picture with Teamy tea. However, when employees looked at the picture that Cardi sent, it didn't look like tea was in her bottle, it looked like cranberry juice instead. And so the Teamy team called Cardi up and said, hey, is that our tea in your bottle? And she goes, no, you know, I love your tea, but look, I'm pregnant and I'm just not gonna risk it. So she refused to even drink it. But this former Teamy employee also told me that Cardi B was still very happy with her check from Teamy. Most of the time, the people that you see on Instagram promoting this stuff, they were fit from before. Give us the discount codes to your nutritionist, personal chefs, personal trainers, airbrushers, and plastic surgeons, you bloody liars. And here's an article about Cardi B transforming her post-baby body, not with Teamy, but with surgery. Now, Jamila was not the only person calling Cardi and Timmy out because the federal government had its own shade to throw at them in the form of a massive lawsuit worth millions of dollars. 
before we move on, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and a comment down below. Y'all, I have gotten so many sweet comments about how these guzzle episodes deserve more views and that means so much to me. And so when you engage with this video, it tells the algorithm guides to bless this video with more exposure. And so I'd be really grateful. So back in 2018, the Federal Trade Commission, which is the agency that protects consumers from deceptive businesses, well, it was saying that online influencers were pushing all sorts of questionable products online, but they were not always making it clear that they were getting paid to plug these products. Specifically in Timmy's case, the FTC noticed that influencers often would not disclose that they were getting paid until farther down in their posts. And so unless users click the more link on Instagram, they would not necessarily know that the post was an ad. So in 2018, the FTC wrote to Timmy and told it, your influencers need to make it super clear that they're getting paid and they need to do that above the more link on IG. So this was the FTC being nice. It was giving Timmy a warning. It was explaining the law. And then what does Timmy do? Well, they said they implemented a social media policy that required all the legal disclosures. And they said they gave a copy of that to all of the influencers that they did deals with. But despite that promise, the FTC says hundreds of well-known influencers that Timmy did deals with made Instagram posts plugging Timmy that were still not following the rules. And this is especially sketchy because the FTC said that Timmy's contracts often required influencers to get Timmy's approval for a post before they published it, including the specific text to be used. And so Timmy definitely should have been checking that they were following the rules. And so when they don't, the FTC ain't having it. And they're like, okay, you're just gonna straight up ignore our rules? Oh, hell no! And so then the Federal Trade Commission comes hard for Timmy. The FTC files a lawsuit against Timmy for not only failing to make the right disclosures, but for deceptive health claims. Timmy's Profit Tea, for example, promised to rejuvenate the internal organs and even fight against cancer cells, plus a whole lot of other stuff. But Timmy did not have science to back up all of its miracle claims, and the FTC said that these bogus claims helped Timmy take ill-gotten monies from customers, saying its tea sales were over $15 million at the time. The FTC also sent letters right to a bunch of Timmy's influencer clients, calling them out for not following the law, including Cardi B, Jordan Sparks, and Brittany Renner. In the end, Timmy was told to stop making bogus health claims, and the FTC also ordered it to pay $15 million, but ultimately Timmy only had to pay $1 million because it said it was unable to pay the full judgment. By the way, Adi's estimated net worth is $50 million, according to The Sun. The good news here is that the FTC took that money that Timmy did pay and they returned it to consumers who bought Timmy. The bad news is that it looks like Timmy is still not following the rules in 2022. These are just a few examples I found very easily in recent Instagram posts. And these are legit Timmy partners. I tested the discount codes and everything. And so it seems like Timmy does not care. And honestly, why would they? I mean, even after they paid a million bucks to the FTC, they still walked away with 14 million. And so it could just be the cost of doing business. And speaking of doing business, we need to talk about the one and only boss babe who is in charge of running Timmy, its CEO and co-founder, Adi Arazzini, because there's a lot to unpack there. Nobody epitomizes the Timmy lifestyle better than Adi Arazzini. It's not just tea, it's a lifestyle. Adi launched Timmy Blends when she was only 23 years old from her five by eight foot bedroom. Six years ago, the floor of my bedroom was filled with thermal labels, poly envelopes, and packing materials. I had no business plan and no big investment firm to give me the capital I need to start a business, but you know what I did have? Grit, perseverance, and courage. Adi said that before Timmy, she didn't go to college and she had no business or marketing background whatsoever. I knew nothing of what this would become. She said she grew up so poor, and so all she ever wanted to do was take care of her mom. So this sounds like this really impressive rags to riches story, right? With this inspiring female entrepreneur, but how did Adi come up with the idea for Teamy Blends in the first place? So the reason that I created this detox program is because I was in the army and the food was really bad. I was eating foods that were mass produced for 3,000 to 5,000 people at a time. So it's not organic, it's not farm to table, it's not fresh. Eating all these foods over a two year period of time accumulated in my gut. Ugh. I had this stored up 
backed up amount of toxins. And what happened is I stopped being able to go to the bathroom. Oh! Like, that's just the truth. That's just what happened. I just looked like I was five months pregnant. Is your stomach feeling constantly bloated like a puffed up balloon? And that's what really led me down to the path of how, how was I going to solve these gut issues? So when I finished my army service, I was like, I need to find something that works for me. I moved back home. I was living with my mom and she had tons of, of natural wellness books. And a lot of them pointed to tea and tea ingredients and herbs and plants. Mm. I said, wonderful, I can get these ingredients at the store. And so I went to my local Whole Foods and I picked up every single tea that said detox, liver cleanse, cleanse, gut cleanse, anything that I could find. I drank them all and it helps you. None of them did anything. Now, right after Adi tells this story in one of these interviews about how none of these teas work, out of nowhere, she starts talking about marketing. Now, this was like five and a half years ago when Instagram wasn't being used for what it's being used today. Right. There was all of these detox or skinny tea companies that was like a blonde Australian model holding a bag of tea and then it's just being like, drink this tea and look like this model. And I just so disagreed with that. Wow. But have, hasn't people accused you of that or no? That is a great question because if Adi was so opposed to using skinny models to market detox tea, then why was Timmy Blends posting all of these pics on its social media of super skinny models? I wonder whether Adi saw all these other detox companies using these skinny models and she was like, I can freshen up that approach. I can modernize it, I can do it on social media, and I can use skinny influencers. I wonder whether she saw a market opportunity to sell the dream of easy weight loss through a detox product and promise all of these miracle claims without any proof because she saw other companies doing it. You're, you're prying on women that want to detox but don't really know what it is and you're giving them kind of this product that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and that was the point that I was like, I'm gonna make my own tea. That's when I decided to get in the game and start selling detox tea, even though detox tea hadn't worked for me at all and I didn't have a product that would work for other people, but hey, I mean, these companies didn't have a product that worked either and they're still killing it and so why can't I? If you're listening and looking, right. you, you can analyze a path to success. Our customers at Teamy, they're not nutritionists. They target people who don't know any better, myself included, I guess. The science and the explanations were so overwhelming. And I just was like, I'm just a regular girl that shops at Target. Like, Teamy's not fancy. Teamy's your next door neighbor. Teamy's yeah. the girl that shops at Target. Teamy's yeah. your girlfriend that wants to know what happened with your breakup. You know, yeah. like, we're that girl. Y'all, let's be real. Adi is an expert at marketing. She is not a medical expert. I'm not that educated on health and wellness. What health questions do you have that you really need answered and answered correctly? Her Instagram profile says she's a certified nutrition coach, which doesn't mean anything. Anybody can sell you a certificate to be a health coach. Adi got hers years after she started Teamy from an institute that's not accredited by the U.S. Department of Education, and you can earn your certificate in six months online. On the other hand, it takes 10 to 14 years to become a fully licensed medical doctor in the U.S., and you gotta train for years in person with actual patients. For medical issues that you have, please talk to your doctor. That's what we are here for. Generally, just don't ever take diet advice from women who know nothing about nutrition or basic advertising ethics. And speaking of ethics, next up, we gotta talk about Timmy Blint's possible ties to the cult of Scientology. And y'all get ready, because this is straight up insane. So back in 2020, a YouTuber named Katie Joy from the channel Without a Crystal Ball posted a series of tweets. Adi Arazini, CEO of Teamy Blends, is a high-ranking Scientologist. Today I received a tip from an insider at Teamy Blends that they use Scientology courses to teach their sales staff, and the insider sent me photos of their training material. The insider is forced to take Scientology courses despite their Christian faith. When she declined, she was told she would not receive a raise or a bonus ever. First of all, this is very illegal. Employers are not allowed to make their workers practice a certain religion. That would be discrimination under federal law. So if this is going on, it is a huge deal because of that alone. But it's also a big deal because Scientology is a cult. Scientology was started by a dude named L. Ron Hubbard, who, by the way, was a science fiction writer before he ever started this 
religion. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. And speaking of madmen, L. Ron Hubbard actually requested treatment for mental health from the Veterans Administration after he served in the military. I avoided out of pride any mental examinations, but I cannot account for, nor rise above, long periods of moroseness and suicidal inclinations. Would you please help me? Despite Hubbard's obvious mental issues, he became a top-selling author of sci-fi books, but he wasn't happy with what he was getting paid as an author. Hubbard actually said there was no real money writing science fiction, and the way to get rich was to start a religion, according to multiple sources. In 1950, at the age of 39, he wrote an essay in astounding science fiction, detailing discoveries he made about the human mind in a science he called Dianetics. Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. A fresh look at today's problems. Buy your copy at Walden Books. And it hit the top of the bestseller list of the New York Times, and it just stayed there month in, month out. Hubbard promised his book could work wonders on anyone who tried it. All of a sudden, here comes Dianetics. And Dianetics is saying, wait a minute. What if you can really rise above the state of a human being into something more special? Hubbard was probably one of the, if not the most, successful con men that ever lived. The IRS investigated L. Ron Hubbard back in the 1970s and found he was skimming millions of dollars from the church, so he was stealing from his own members and then laundering that money through dummy corporations in Panama and stashing it in Swiss bank accounts. The amounts of money in Switzerland are minimal. The IRS was seeking an indictment of Hubbard for tax fraud, and then what did the cult of Scientology do? It carried out one of the largest criminal conspiracies in history called Operation Snow White. It was early this morning when FBI agents entered and searched three Scientology offices, one of them in Washington, the other two here in Los Angeles. Nothing in American history can compare with the scale of domestic espionage of Operation Snow White. Scientologist spies wiretapped, burglarized, and infiltrated 136 government agencies, foreign embassies, consulates, and organizations in more than 30 countries. And in the end, several of Scientology's top officials, including Hubbard's own wife, ended up pleading guilty. 21 Scientologists, including the church's international president, Heber Yensha, have been indicted for crimes including tax evasion and inducement to suicide. We've been reporting on allegations of physical abuse inside the Church of Scientology. The cult's use of manipulative psychological techniques and dubious financial practices have been condemned. The cult has widely been accused of all sorts of crazy stuff, particularly relating to anyone who's spoken out against Scientology, so if I go missing, y'all keep this in mind. Are you here with the Church of Scientology? No comment. No comment? Journalist Russell Miller faced months of harassment as his biography of Hubbard neared publication. When we filmed with Mark Headley in Los Angeles late one night, we were tailed by a car. The bottom line is that Scientology is incredibly dangerous, and so if the CEO of Teamy is part of this cult and trying to push it on her employees, that is a huge deal. So first of all, is Adi a Scientologist? Well, online she says she's Jewish, and if we look at her wedding to her husband Alex, you can see that they've integrated Jewish traditions into the event. However, Scientology actually has a lot of Jewish members, and Scientology says you can be a member of any other religion and still train in Scientology and take their courses. And so the question is, has Adi taken Scientology courses? Well, we can look into that because when a Scientologist completes a course or gets to a certain level in the training, their name is typically listed in one of Scientology's magazines. And there's a site that republishes these lists and guess what I found? Adi has completed a whole lot of Scientology courses, including ones with her husband Alex and with her mom Siri as recently as 2021. She's even listed as a patron with honors and that means she's donated at least $100,000 to Scientology. But according to the Sun newspaper and an employee review on Glassdoor, Adi's donations are much higher than that because they're around $5 million. 
Another claim that The Sun and others make is that Adi owns a condo in Clearwater, Florida, which Scientology says is its spiritual mecca, and sources say that condo is in the same luxury building as Scientology's favorite celebrity Tom Cruise and its biggest donor, a billionaire named Bob Duggan, who's given over $360 million to the cult. So, is this true? Well, an article from the Daily Mail has pics of this fancy condo building, including photos of the pool there. See how it's got that swanky looking basket canopy seat in the back there and that square kiddie pool in the corner? Well, here are multiple pictures on different days from Adi's social media where you can see that same basket canopy seat in the background and that square kiddie pool there in the corner. So, if I had to bet, I'd say it looks like this is true. Next, I want to talk about how Adi feels about doctors and medicine, and how her views compare to what Scientology's views are. Adi has told the story about how she had all these stomach problems back when she was in the army many times, but in one of the interviews when she was saying this, the host asks her, Had you gone to the doctor at all? I, I was in the military, so I had gone to my military doctor, and they were suggesting to use different drugs, different pills, and I really didn't want to take those. When people go to the doctor and they say, hey, I have this problem, what, what should I do? And the doctor writes them a prescription. That action, it immediately takes responsibility off of the person. Yeah. It's saying that the doctor knows better than me, and how could they? How could they know better than you and your body. Nobody at the end of the day is telling you what's wrong with you. You don't have a guy giving you a list of questions and saying, well, this is what I think is wrong with you. No, you decide for yourself. Now, Scientology's main site says that it encourages members who have a physical condition to go to a qualified medical professional and to get treatment and take prescription drugs. But I started digging into the Scientology handbook and it says that painkillers prescribed by doctors, such as aspirin, for example, often have very bad side effects and that they render the soul stupid, blank, forgetful, delusive, and irresponsible. The only drug Scientologists are outright told you're not allowed to take is psychiatric drugs. That having been said, because of many things Hubbard said on the subject of even non-psychiatric medications, there is a, somewhat of a culture in Scientology of not going to a doctor or not taking normal medications that your average non-Scientologist wouldn't even bat an eye at taking. Scientology is like very anti-medicine. Taking an over-the-counter medicine may impede their spiritual progress in Scientology. So many Scientologists will not take Advil, Tylenol, Motrin, or give it to their kids. The Scientology handbook goes on to say that drugs set you up to get into situations which are truly disastrous, and this is true not only of illegal street drugs, but also of medical drugs that are supposed to help people. There is a culture within Scientology of somewhat looking down on doctors as only treating symptoms of illnesses. So Scientology believes that most of these are psychosomatic illnesses that are just kind of caused by the mind. And that only a Scientologist or a Dianeticist can actually treat the true cause of an illness. Hubbard claimed to have uncovered the cure of virtually every ailment known to men and professed to have healed himself from partial blindness caused by an alleged war injury. If you are a Scientologist, you are one of the relative few that hold the answers in your possession that all humankind depend upon. Being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. You know you're the only one that can really help. According to a medical doctor known as the Skeptoc and the anti-Scientology book called Going Clear, Scientology's founder, L. Ron Hubbard, was afraid of doctors himself. When a motorcycle accident left him in severe pain from broken ribs and other injuries, he refused to go to the hospital and even refused pain pills, complaining that they slowed down his heart. Hubbard also chastised subordinates for wearing eyeglasses and said needing them was a transgression against Scientology. High-level Scientologists should not have accidents and illnesses. When one woman developed a cold sore, they said she was committing treason. Despite their aversion to prescription drugs, Scientologists are curiously gullible about alternative medicine. Hubbard was also fanatical about taking vitamins. Y'all, he even invented his own vitamin called Dianazine, but the Food and Drug Administration ended up seizing and destroying thousands of Dianazine tablets because the labels made bogus health claims. By the way, here's a post from Adi talking about how many vitamins she takes. This is really only like 75% of what I usually take. 
but the similarities between Hubbard and a D don't stop there. Just like a D, Hubbard has his own detox program called the Purification Rundown. The program says it's used to purify the body by allowing it to release toxins stored in cellular tissue. The Purification Rundown actually opens the way to spiritual progress. It's an all-natural regimen which frees one from the harmful effects of drugs and toxins. L. Ron Hubbard discovered that all of the drugs and pesticides and toxins and things that you've ever been exposed to actually are still to a degree in your body and can prevent your spiritual development and enhancement. Well, this sounds familiar. Old drugs that you took, pesticides, you sweat all those things out of your system and you feel so much more alive. It basically involves running on a treadmill, taking a massive amount of vitamins to the point that you overdose and can have a skin reaction that looks like a sunburn, but Scientology just says that's a sign that the toxins are leaving your body. This punishing regime is repeated daily for at least two to three weeks. People start to hallucinate allegedly because their bodies are getting rid of impurities. And all of this gives me deja vu again, thinking back to Timmy, you know, it's not diarrhea, it's the toxins leaving your body. The purification program also involves sitting in a sauna for four hours a day or longer for weeks and weeks at a time. People have suffered heat stroke, brain injury, heart problems, organ failure, and even death after doing this program, according to multiple sources on Wikipedia. I was at 5,000 milligrams of niacin for months, and I don't know what that did to my body. I have no idea. There was like gray stuff coming out of my skin, and I didn't know if it was like my insides coming out or what after that long of being in the sauna, five hours a day, every day. So in my experience, and what happened to me was I start feeling kind of strange, and it's about like at like hour three in the sauna. So then I try to get out of the sauna, and I start stumbling, and I can't walk, like I can't use my legs. And I start slurring, and I, I just kind of like go and collapse into one of the chairs. After this happens, Steve says that the purification staff splashed him with water and then escorted him back into the sauna. I was in the sauna that day about six hours. I just felt like I was being tortured. So why would anyone subject themselves to this kind of torture? Well, like Timmy Blends, the cult of Scientology likes to use influencer marketing to promote its detox program. From the start, L. Ron Hubbard set out to attract celebrities, believing high-profile public figures would be its most effective evangelists. Of all the cult groups we've studied for the last two decades now, Scientology has shown itself consistently to be the most effective in terms of its recruiting. My mission was to recruit celebrities into Scientology and make them into walking success stories. It's mind control, it's peer pressure, it's Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Christy Alley. The Hollywood Celebrity Center has long been a haven for entertainers who take specialized Scientology courses. So on Tuesday nights at the Celebrity Center, they'll have a free lecture about the purification rundown. And sometimes they'll even have one of their celebrities host the lecture. You're hearing a celebrity that you've seen on TV basically vouch for this program and say how this program has helped them succeed in the industry. When I found Celebrity Center, I found uh, my life again. The basic thing that I think Scientology helps people with is to rehabilitate their own spirit. And it works, and that's the bottom line. They're doing this program, so it must be good. On top of that, the program also promised a bunch of miracle cures, like boosting your IQ up to 15 points, helping you survive radiation in the event of a nuclear war, and addressing the conditions of cancer, AIDS, heart problems, kidney failure, liver disease, and obesity. Which, again, reminds me of someone. All of these promises and celebrity endorsements fooled a lot of people into thinking that this was a legit medical program. Narconon, a drug rehab program with ties to Scientology, has recently come under scrutiny. Inmates helped build saunas at the prison in order to utilize Narconon's purification rundown. Y'all, it was even given free to 9-11 police and firefighters through a program called the New York Rescue Workers Detoxification Project, which received almost a million dollars in taxpayer money. Many rescue workers are still paying a price for their heroic service at the World Trade Center. Just go there and do it. Just put it there. Let's go. Here's the money. Let's go. Let's just get one person through there. Now, I can't sleep another night. And as the first of those firemen moved through the program, those toxins became visible again. It was the color purple, and it was oozing from their pores. I've heard about the program from a few other firefighters, and 
Well, I went there, I was skeptical, didn't know what to uh, expect. And uh, as soon as I started the program, I had reactions, throat, skin reactions, sweat that turned black. Plus, the program required rescue workers to stop using inhalers and taking medications that were prescribed by actual doctors, according to fire department officials. With those firemen no longer confronting a life of inhalers and steroids, their grateful response said it all. To our brother L. Ron Hubbard from your brothers at the New York City Fire Department. The craziest part, though, is that this detox program is still going on. It's actually required by Scientology at the very beginning of your spiritual journey, and you have to do this purification rundown before you can advance. Scientology also offers the purification rundown to children, according to multiple sources online, and look, they give them a little juice and a deck of Uno cards. In a post on a site called ScientologyParent.com, a dad named Thaddeus says, our whole family recently spent a month at FLAG, the Scientology Religious Retreat in Clearwater, Florida, and it was the most rejuvenating experience I've ever had for my marriage, my family, and for me personally. So kids who are born into the cult of Scientology have been indoctrinated with this detox pseudoscience BS their whole lives. It's all they've ever known, especially because they're told it's dangerous to listen to anybody who's criticizing Scientology. So this is something I want you to keep in mind when it comes to Adi because we about to meet her mama who is really into Scientology. This is Adi's mom. Her name is Sari, and these two seem very close. I have the best mom in the world. I love her so much. You guys know it's been my dream always to have like a TV show with my mom. <laughs> Adi's mom also seems to be very into the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. On her LinkedIn, Adi's mom Sari says, I am a trained Scientologist delivering Scientology and Dianetics auditing. Auditing is Scientology spiritual counseling. So through the auditing, what you do is you can handle all kind of unwanted emotions, uh, habits that you have that you maybe you don't like about yourself. Is this a form of psychoanalysis? No, psychoanalysis, they lay back. Don't, don't associate Scientology with such people. Here's Adi's mom showing off her auditing room, saying, I'm so proud to help and make others' lives better. Sari's LinkedIn also says she is a personal consultant to individuals and business owners through a company called MGE Management Experts, which has a page about Ron Hubbard and his management system on its website. So MGE Management is definitely down with Scientology. I also found an employee review of MGE on Glassdoor that said they are a part of WISE that stands for World Institute of Scientology Enterprises. Apparently WISE is an association where members pay to buy these business courses that were developed by the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, and they use these courses to train their staff or to train other people's staff if they're consultants. WISE infiltrates private and public corporations to recruit new members into Scientology. In various disguises, WISE agencies present themselves as management consultants and generally hide any affiliation to Scientology. They come to businesses and say, we can help you 2x or 3x, meaning two times, three times your income, if you just sign up for this little course. And I, yeah, you've got to understand what you're getting into when you get into something like this. The truth of the matter is they are under the umbrella of the Church of Scientology International. They will try to keep it separate. We're really different. We're the management thing, yada, yada. This isn't Scientology. Yeah, that's a line that we're taught to say, just so you know, it is Scientology. Absolutely. MGE and these other... Front management consulting companies that are part of the World Institute of Scientology Enterprise, or WISE, yeah. have as the primary measure of their success mm -hmm. is how many people they get into Scientology. And they count you as Scientologist, just so you know. That's exactly right. Their, their ultimate goal is to get you over from WISE onto the bridge to total freedom. This is Scientology's bridge to total freedom. If you're down here, you're a total noob, but you can work your way up this bridge to become a super Scientologist. So by the top of this bridge, you should be able to do shit with your mind. There was a point where I was just like, oh, I actually am exterior. And then everything just opened up. Whoa, what happened? Oh my God. But it ain't cheap to become a magical exterior being because to advance up the Scientology bridge, you're gonna have to buy a sh ton of expensive courses from the cult. Scientologists are required to buy every book ever written by L. Ron Hubbard. 
you're supposed to give as much money as they can get from you. That's exactly right. No, There's no end to the m amount of money they will take. They managed, within the space of a week, to get £25,000 off me. How much did you spend in all? I would say a total between my wife and I at the time, maybe four to 500000 And that's par for the course, because it costs, on average, $380,000 to finish the Scientology bridge. And so it can be very financially lucrative for the cult of Scientology to recruit new members and get them signed up on the bridge. Here's a wise publication saying, From Business to Bridge, a comprehensive guide on how to refer a flood of clients to your local org. I mean, these people are constantly sifting people and listening and watching and teaching you, and pretty soon you're turning into a Scientologist, whether you know it or not, right? They provided the runway, so to speak, or the lead-in for me to take part in the church services. Wise members get paid a 10% commission from the Church of Scientology for every new recruit that they sign up on the bridge to total freedom. And that's a commission structure that Scientology is familiar with because after L. Ron Hubbard bounced from science fiction to starting his own religion, Time Magazine said he wrote a policy called How to Sell Scientology. See, Scientology has salespeople who are called field staff members, or FSMs, and according to Time Magazine, these FSMs could earn a 10 to 15% commission for closing new members to Scientology, or raw meat, as Ron liked to call them. According to Insider, these Scientology salespeople would earn a commission on everything their recruits did in Scientology, from the pricey courses on the bridge to the auditing sessions that cost $800 per hour. Scientology salespeople are still around today, and they're still earning that 10% commission on money that they bring into the cult. The ones who perform the best or who have the highest statistics can earn Hollywood-style stars and attend ridiculously elaborate conventions where they get awarded for their service to the cult. How much must one do to call themselves a Scientologist? How much so that when their head hits the pillow, they can live with themselves knowing they did all they could do? L. Ron Hubbard actually wrote, make sure that lots of bodies move through the shop. Make money, make more money, make others produce so as to make money. However you get them in or why, just do it. You are ready to audit and audit and audit. Hours and hours, every day. Scientology has also paid auditors commissions for recruiting new members. All over the world, auditors are succeeding. You can make a very good living with as few as three paying pre-clears or new members a week, though you will soon have many more. Here's an example. You send your pre-clear into a nearby org and she buys an academy training package for $8,000. You receive a 15% commission on those services, which is payable when she arrives at the org to do them. If you were to send 20 pre-clears a year into the org for similar packages, you would have $24,000 in income. This is the road that leads to personal freedom. Yeah, I really can do this, you know, I really can do it. And then what happens? You do it. Yeah, so Scientology has had many well-oiled recruitment schemes in place for a while, and WISE is just the one they use to infiltrate businesses, and it has worked really well. Back in 1995, the insurance giant Allstate even fell for WISE business training. More than 3,500 Allstate workers participated in seminars that taught them to disregard ethics in the quest for greater productivity. The principles in the training materials include rewarding without question the most productive workers and unfailingly penalizing the least productive. Of course, a bunch of lawsuits were filed after this Allstate situation, and those weren't the only lawsuits, as this Redditor points out, listing over two dozen instances where people have sued because of wise workplace training. Y'all, this is also not in the past. There are tons of recent Reddit posts about MGE and Scientology training at people's jobs. For example, here's a dentist named Michael Waldron who's listed as working together with MGE on business education. and. Here's a video from one of his former employees. Martina says the owner of the office, Dr. Michael Waldron, requires new employees to sign this contract, mandating employees to go to Florida on the office's dime several times a year. I was told that we were going to dental seminars. But she says she quickly learned otherwise, reading books that had nothing to do with dental work and loaded with symbols associated with Scientology. And she says lie detectors, or e-meters, were out in the open. 
An e-meter is a device that Scientology says measures the human soul. The Food and Drug Administration was suspicious. The FDA, which believed Hubbard was making medical claims for the e-meter, paid a visit to the D.C. organization in 1963. American courts have condemned the e-meter as being totally unscientific. Has the e-meter ever been subjected to randomized clinical trials to assess its efficacy? I have no idea. I don't know why it would be. It works in Scientology and that's what people use it in. To my knowledge, no. So yeah, this is some quack machine that's used during auditing and we can see the e-meter here in Eddie's mom's auditing room. Secondly, that contract that this employee said she was required to sign Look, if your boss tells you to sign a contract like this saying, yeah, this training is by the founder of the religion Scientology, but it's not religious, don't sign this. If you're facing a situation like this at your work and you live in the United States, you should file a complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which is a lot of words, but it just means that everybody should have an equal opportunity to work regardless of their religion and nobody should be pushing religion on you. If the commission finds evidence that your workplace is discriminated against you, they can make your employer stop they can make them give you your job back if you've been fired. They can even make them pay you. And I've got links down below with more information if you're interested. All right, now let's go back to that tweet alleging that these are Scientology books at Timmy's offices that are being taught to employees by an auditor. Well, we already know that Adi's mom is an auditor, but is she bringing Scientology into the Timmy offices? Well, there are a lot of stories on Adi's Instagram showing her mom at the Timmy offices. Guys. Look ah! who's, <laughs> look who's making these. Here she is with what looks like a full desk setup. We've also got what looks like a row of dark colored books that look like the books that are in this tweet. Also, you see on the table, we've got all these dictionaries. I mean, we've got a stack of them here and a blue Oxford dictionary here. Well, Wise Materials from 2006 show a lot of dictionaries included in a package, including a blue Oxford one. Another thing is, you see this lion symbol that Wise uses? That's also in the pick of the alleged training books used at Timmy. So this all looks very sus to me, and I found way more receipts from employees themselves about Scientology at Timmy, and we're gonna get to those in the next chapter. But first, I wanna go over a few more Scientology connections that Adi has. Remember that interview that Adi did here? Well, the host is a woman named Elena Cardone, who is married to the internet's cringiest fake guru, Grant Cardone. And they happen to be some of Scientology's most influential leaders and biggest donors, according to sources online. Grant Cardone is very open about being a Scientologist, and he's proud of that. And he says he wouldn't be where he is today without it. And y'all, if you know how scammy Grant Cardone is, then that should tell you everything you need to know about Scientology. By the way, Grant Cardone also has complaints against him by former employees who say that they were fired after they refused to do Scientology training at that workplace. Next, let's look at Adi's family, and let's start with her husband. Adi is married to a guy named Alex Arizini, and here's Alex listed as a staff member for the Cult of Scientology in Portland. During this interview in 2019, Adi said that Alex lived in Portland and that they were in a long distance marriage. The goal is that I'll be able to live in Portland to actually have a marriage, that would be cool. Anyway, this is Alex Arizini's sister, Elise, who is also listed as a Scientology staff member. And here are the two of them cozying up to a guy named Jeremy Arizini. Here's Jeremy giving a speech at Alex and Adi's wedding. And based on several photos I've seen online, I would guess that Jeremy is Alex's brother, or at the very least, a very close family member of Alex, which is important because Jeremy has played a very big role in Scientology. In 2013, he donated $1 million to a Scientology organization in Portland, and he literally became the poster boy for Scientology fundraising. Jeremy's also listed as a Scientology staff member, but he's the executive director in Portland, and no surprise, his wife Haley also works there. Jeremy's even been featured in a Scientology TV show, and he's not just featured, he's actually hosting this episode, and for some reason, eating donuts, and yes, that's a donut with Captain Crunch on it, but Scientologists are against drugs. Okay. Oh my God. This Jeremy Arizini dude also owns a coffee shop in Portland called Morse Coffee Company, and he owns this with his father-in-law, David Morse. David Morse has a business called David Morse & Associates, which has also been listed as a WISE member in its 2006 directory. 
This company, David Morrison Associates, or DMA, investigates insurance claims. So if someone says they hurt their leg on the job and they can't walk and they wanna get insurance money for that, then the insurance investigator is gonna make sure they ain't lying about that and actually going out dancing on Saturday night. And that means the investigator might be waiting outside the club in a parked car in the shadows with a camera doing a little surveillance. And this is important because surveillance is something that the cult of Scientology is very familiar with. Remember I mentioned earlier that a bunch of Scientologists went to jail for spying and breaking into all these government agencies in this massive criminal plan called Operation Snow White? Well, after that happened, Scientology said that it kicked all the criminals out of its organization, but several sources say that the Scientology spies that were involved with Snow White just got new jobs working for David Morrison Associates. For example, a guy named Henning Help was convicted in Snow White, and his LinkedIn says he's senior VP at DMA. Duke Snyder was also convicted in Snow White, and here he is listed in a DMA brochure from 2005 as the CEO. He's also listed on the current DMA website. The dude above him, Thomas Reitze, was also alleged in court documents to be in charge of Operation Snow White. So the point I'm trying to make here is that Timmy's CEO AD has some very deep-rooted ties to Scientology and her family, and those aren't all of them, but I don't want to put everybody on blast because I want to be sensitive to the fact that people can change their mind about Scientology. And I also want you to keep in mind that Adi and many of her relatives have grown up inside the bubble of Scientology. For example, here's a photo of Adi apparently graduating from a school called Clearwater Academy. Clearwater Academy just so happens to use study technology developed by the author and humanitarian L. Ron Hubbard. And they also serve grades preschool to 12th grade starting at age two. So there's a good chance that Scientology is all Adi has ever known from a very young age. Now, that being said, that in no way makes it okay for an employer to push Scientology's beliefs onto their employees if those allegations against Adi are accurate. And speaking of those allegations, next up we are gonna hear directly from the former employees who worked at Timmy, and y'all, they are spilling all the tea about what went down at those offices. All right, y'all, now it's time to find out what it's like to work at Timmy Blends, and let's start with what Timmy says on its own Instagram. Wanna know what it's like to work for Timmy? Oh my God, yes, where can I apply? Our meetings are productive but fun. We practice self-care at our desks. We're all encouraging and best of friends. Plus, we're ranked 222 in Inc.'s fastest growing companies. Want to have this much fun at work? We're hiring. That sounds like absolute heaven. It's so much work happiness. Well, that sounds amazing. And so I'm sure that these employees are going to have super positive reviews about Teamy. Deserves zero stars. Cult-like. Will affect your mental health. Do not work here. This job will give you PTSD. Please go find any other job. Run away. Now there are several positive reviews for Timmy, but I spoke directly with multiple former employees who wanted to stay anonymous because they were scared of backlash from their former employer and from Scientology, but they told me that Timmy management forced them to write nice reviews about working for the company. Don't believe any of the wholly positive reviews on this site. The CEO asked for a mass crusade to post good reviews so that people would think it's a good place to work. Notice how all the positive reviews are on the same day? Management would stand behind our computers while we wrote the reviews. Now somewhere out there, there's still this nice review and I can't take it down because it was written with my Timmy email that I no longer have. And if you look, most of the positive reviews on Glassdoor are from current employees. Former staff also told me they had to write positive product reviews. Makes workers show love to Teamy posts or products that aren't being received well by the public. If you go check out Ulta, you can see a huge influx of positive reviews that were all posted around the same time of the day. That was a message sent out to every employee. We had a checklist for product launches that included posting positive reviews, and we were also told to downvote negative ones. I would often have people message me on Timmy's chat box saying, hey, I wrote a negative review on your site and I don't see it anywhere. Well, look at that. On Timmy's website, it looks like the Detox Tea Pack has over 3,000 five-star reviews. But when you look at the reviews, it seems like you can't leave fewer than five stars no matter how you felt about the product. I have not received my order yet. Five stars. I still haven't got my order. Five stars. No one has replied to my complaints. Five stars. Now an office manager for Teamy Blends has responded to these negative allegations from employees saying that 
All of our reviews are 100% anonymous and genuine. We do not know who posts them or ask anyone to leave fake reviews. But if Timmy's employees were writing fake product reviews while they were working there, then they decided to keep it 100 when they were reviewing Timmy after they left their jobs. A former employee that I spoke with said, one time the team was working on a product called Teamy Nursing for expected mothers. And Adi was asked about the health benefits, like, does it do this, does it do that? And she's like, yeah, just put that it does. Another former employee said, I always felt really uncomfortable making all these health claims about products without any scientific proof. But if anybody on staff questioned the claims, then managers would immediately get defensive and be like, why are you asking that? A past chat representative told me, you would have people who had real medical issues like Crohn's disease, and they would have questions about whether the tea would help their condition. And I would ask management like, hey, what's the answer to this? And they're just like, you just have to recommend a tea to them. Former employees I spoke with also said that staff were required to do the 30-day detox when they joined the team, and you'd get in big trouble with management if you couldn't finish it, even if it made you super sick. I don't think she gives a shit at all about whether the health claims are true. I don't think the claims are honest, but I do think that Adi believes they're honest. She made me feel like it was very important to be skinny. Adi would use her employees as product models, and she even made a list once of girls she found to be skinny versus plus size, and many of the girls she listed as plus size were not even close. A former Teamy executive told me that any overweight employees or employees that she didn't consider hot or pretty, she would not want on the stories and they wouldn't be invited to certain things. It was so clear that there was preferential treatment for hot people. Past employees also had a lot to say about the quality of Teamy's products. A former chat rep said, I got so many product complaints. Obviously, a lot of them were about people shitting their brains out from the tea, but people would also send me photos of brand new tea opened with random stuff inside, like bugs, screws, cigarette butts, or bits of plastic. This morning sold out. Coronavirus driving a consumer scramble for hand sanitizers. Last week, a 12-ounce bottle of hand sanitizer was selling on Amazon for $50. Sneak peek. Three weeks ago, when things started to get serious here in the USA about the virus, I started researching ways that I could help my community right now. I read through comments and feedback of what people were saying, specifically about hand sanitizers being out of stock and hard to get. I thought to myself, there must be a way I can help here. Very soon after news reports like this came out, Teamy Blends saw a market opportunity and whipped together a new product to sweep in and save the day. A former employee wrote that they tried to profit off people's fear during the coronavirus by selling a hand cleanser that they marketed as a replacement for hand sanitizer. The kicker? It contained zero alcohol. Another Teamy employee said, I don't usually do stuff like this, but because I have endorsed this company in the past and honestly because of how disgusting this is, I'm going to anyways. Teamy Blends has displayed a pattern of predatory deceptive behavior with their advertising and product lineup. So much, in fact, that they were just fined $15 million by the FTC a month ago. So to see this post for a new natural hand cleaner pop up in the middle of a worldwide pandemic that has claimed 53,000 plus lives and sickened over 1 million people is just gross. This product description is super misleading, claiming to contain natural antiviral, antifungal, and disinfectant properties, nowhere clarifying that this product will not, in fact, kill the COVID-19 virus. This is purposeful, exploitative, dangerous advertising that is taking advantage of this pandemic and could have potentially devastating and deadly consequences. Oh, and to top it all off, they're gonna charge $14.99 for four ounces. Please, please, please do not support this company. Be safe and wash your hands, guys, with soap. See, the thing about being an online business where you hire a whole bunch of people who are excellent writers and great at social media is that when you burn them, they can serve you up savagely and know exactly how to do it. So after this ex-employee wrote this post, she shared it in one of Timmy's Facebook groups that was full of its influencers. She also shared it with a bunch of her ex teamy colleagues who were more than happy to blast it out. In the end, so many people called Teamy out that they had to pull the product and have since cleansed the internet of Teamy Protect. Now, Teamy's attempt at a hand cleaner was definitely not its only problematic product, though. Two former employees told me about a blender that Teamy sells called the Mix It, saying that the first iteration of this product was terrible. It had a sticker on the bottom of it covering up the actual brand name, which was iMaster, and close to 90% of them did not work. 
and many of the malfunctions were dangerous. I'm talking batteries melting or exploding, or the mixer refusing to turn off and running forever. All of these malfunctions and damages with products meant we had to ship out a lot of product for free. At one point, we had so much unsold and returned product that it was like walking through a maze of boxes at work. Another former employee said, Timmy's products are cheap and sourced from China, and then the price is jacked up and sold as luxury. And if we look at the Chinese site Alibaba, we can see a detox mask here that looks strikingly similar to the detox mask on Timmy's site, except on Alibaba, you can get it for as low as two bucks a pop, and Timmy's selling it for $30. I also found the same situation with other Timmy products, like their superfood cleanser, their silicone tea infuser, and their teamy loose tea tumbler. The only mystery about the e-meter is its price. In a recent US income tax trial, it was stated that it cost about four pounds nine shillings to make, while Hubbard was selling it for between 44 and 51 pounds. Now, just because we see products on Alibaba that look similar to Timmy's products, that doesn't mean that these are the same as Timmy's products. Manufacturers on Alibaba are notorious for making copycats of other companies' products and infringing on their copyrights. Plus, I spoke with former executives from Timmy who confirmed that Timmy's skincare products are made in a lab in Clearwater, Florida. It's crazy, it's just like baking. Adi's also shown the behind the scenes of tests for formulas for new skincare products. Do you see how it's separated? So this is no good. But for some of its other products, we can definitely see that Timmy is sourcing supplies from around the world. So for example, if we look at Timmy's Lux skincare fridge, we can see that it looks very similar to a fridge that's listed on Alibaba, right? Now, this fridge on Alibaba is made by a company called Ningbo Iceberg Electronic Appliance Company. And if we look at shipping records of Timmy's imports, we can see that Ningbo is one of Timmy's top trading partners and that Timmy's gotten some shipments of coolers from Ningbo coming in from China. Now in 2020, Timmy did respond to an employee review on Glassdoor saying, all of our products are created by our CEO. But even though Timmy says Adi was the brainchild behind their products, there's some info online that makes me wonder about that. One of Timmy's co-founders says on LinkedIn that they work for a company called Green Coffee 800. Another Timmy co-founder also mentions Green Coffee 800 in a video on his YouTube channel where he lists this URL at the end of it. And if we go to greencoffee800.com, the bottom of that website, there's a link that says build your own brand. When we click that, we go to a business that helps people create wellness products like detox face masks made with matcha tea, which sounds very familiar, y'all. Build Your Own Brand helps clients customize their own formulas for wellness products, or they can choose from easy pre-existing ones like skinny tea, detox tea, or this health tea here that has the same word-for-word -word benefits that Timmy listed for one of its teas. So it looks like somebody has been doing some copying and pasting here. All right, now let's get into the Scientology allegations and former employees had a lot to say about this. The CEO and her mother are devout Scientologists and the company is saturated with Scientology methods. It is our responsibility to be Scientologists no matter where we live or work, no matter our resources or excuses. They force you to take business classes written and based upon L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology's writings. They were presented as voluntary, but they weren't really, because if you refused to take them, you would suddenly find yourself fired. I watched it happen to multiple people. They make the courses sound very promising, like they're gonna help you so much in your career, and they make you feel so lucky to get them, like they're giving you these free college courses and they don't have to do that, and blah, blah, blah. But a former Timmy executive says that what was in the courses was straight out of Scientology. And we can see here a drill about affinity, reality, and communication, which make up the arc triangle, a concept that is so important to Scientology that it's included in one of the cult's main symbols. I had water poured on me during a course and had to continue to be soaked in water until I quote, didn't react to it. I then sat in wet jeans for the rest of the workday and was told I was weak. Former Scientologists have testified that they also had water poured over them while they were being imprisoned in the hole, which is where Scientologists are allegedly sent for punishment, and it's this rundown building on Scientology's private property that is surrounded by barbed fences and 24-7 surveillance. 
Anyway, a former Timmy employee told me that during the courses there, they were forced to verbally harass each other. The point was to not have a reaction. And so they would tell us, if you know something that's going to really upset the person sitting next to you, say it. So people would have to face each other and say things like, no one likes you here anyway because you're fat or your parents don't love you. Another ex-employee told me that they were told that their insults were not mean enough. They said, they came up to me and they were saying in my ear what to say, like tell them that their partner is cheating on them or that their partner doesn't want to marry them. So we're yelling these terribly mean things to each other and if you had any reaction at all to them, you'd have to do it all over again until you were not phased. This girl has reached her goal. She has gone through a list of some 60 questions without showing any emotional reaction on the e-meter to any of them. You're creating people who are kind of immune to abuse. It's honestly crazy. Stay far away from these courses, except if you want to get a raise, because you can't get a raise unless you take these courses. Another former employee said, I think the purpose of the courses was to get you into Scientology. Plus, there's this page at the end of every book you finish that says, if you want to learn more and better yourself, head to this Scientology office. Personally, I don't think it was about recruiting people to become Scientologists, but it was more like, let's recruit people who can make money for us so that we can give it to the church. And by the way, none of the former employees that I spoke with said they ever saw a Timmy staffer convert to Scientology after taking these courses. The company has an extremely high turnover rate for a reason. Now, a review from January 2022 says, apparently they stopped forcing the course once I quit. Timmy has also replied saying, we do not offer any Scientology courses here at Timmy and are secular as a company. We used to offer optional secular business courses that related to one's job position, but we no longer offer those. We do not discriminate against any religions or promote any religions within our company. Well, we're gonna investigate that because there are some striking similarities between the culture of Scientology and the culture at Timmy that former employees describe. Before we get into it though, first we need to have a little crash course in the religion of Scientology. And we're gonna start with ethics because a lot of religious people want to live ethical lives, right? But in Scientology, ethics has a different meaning. If you look up ethics in the dictionary, it'll say it's the moral principles you have that help you decide how to act and what's right and wrong. But the Scientology handbook says ethics actually means what you do to ensure your survival. It's how you dig yourself out from a really crummy condition all the way up to a super powerful one. It was discovered in Scientology that there are actually 12 possible conditions that you or any aspect of your life could be in. Some of the lowest conditions you can be in are confusion or doubt. You can't doubt what Hubbard says, that would be super unethical. And you can't be a traitor or an enemy of Scientology because that's evil. Now you wanna be up here because the absolute highest conditions you can attain, the most ethical conditions are not love or compassion, but power and affluence. For example, this is what the condition of affluence looks like. This graph shows an affluence going into power. This is what we want. In a condition of power, there is a very, very high level of production that is continuing at that high level. And your goal as a Scientologist is to always be making the organization more powerful. So the more you produce, the more ethical you are. You wanna always be making the numbers go up, always be closing deals, bringing in raw meat, and making more money for the cult. Stats don't lie. To a Scientologist, nothing is more important than statistics, or stats for short. They're the secret to being happy and successful on a job or in life. Mm. Used correctly, My pleasure. they work like magic. L. Ron Hubbard was all about measuring production, and all production can be measured with one stat or another. Example, a typist gets out 500 letters in one week. That's a statistic. If the next week the typist gets out 600 letters, that's an up statistic. If the typist gets out 300 letters, that's a down statistic. According to a former Scientology exec, the consequences for down stats are too horrific to confront. One of the penalties for the auditors making mistakes in their auditing sessions was to be tossed overboard. There's this article in the Tampa Bay Times about a guy who used to be a salesperson for Scientology, and it says he lived in terror of what would happen if he didn't make his number, a weekly sales target of $200,000. At the end of the day, if that money's not in the box, you failed. And if my statistics were not in the range they needed to be, it, it would drive me to tears. His bosses publicly humiliated him, calling him a loser, a saboteur, and they got in his face screaming and swearing. I was 
I thought a pretty decent, strong person, but it demolished me. On the other hand, if a salesperson was upstat and making Scientology lots of money, they'd get rewarded with fancy trips with limos and room service and luxurious dinners. Now, a Scientology spokeswoman has said that most of Levy's descriptions of the activities of church fundraisers are false and his figures are clearly embellished, but a former Scientology exec also says that nothing is more important to a staff member than having their stats up for the week. They will lie, cheat, cut corners, and harangue to make sure the line on their graph points upward and doesn't dip. Now, Scientology has called this former executive Mike Render a tainted source spewing religious hatred to make money. But L. Ron Hubbard himself wrote that, in short, a staff member can get away with murder so long as their statistic is up. Kill them dead, that's what you're supposed to do. We lied to banks, people obtained loans under false pretenses. It was whatever we could do to raise money. And look at all their credit cards. So you can see that your people definitely have so with that in mind, let's get back to what Timmy's former employees had to say. When I first got hired, everything was great. They were super nice and welcoming and they win you over with the cutesy office space and fun products. But the second you disagree or the CEO even perceives something is wrong with your stats, she turns into a horrible spidery monster who will eat you alive in front of the whole company too. I am like a lot to deal with. Yeah. You know, I want it my way. Uh -huh. I'm so ambitious. I, I always saw myself as like a leader or someone that liked to be in charge. I, I don't know if I'm the, the picture perfect mentor in this area. She has no actual leadership qualities whatsoever, outside of being able to convince 1.1 million followers on Instagram that a 30 day detox will somehow make them skinny. Her management style is absolutely toxic. If there is one person I hate in this world more than anything, it has to be her. Even though she doesn't show her face in the office often, her presence and unreasonably high expectations are always present. You will be forced to keep all of your statistics every single week and those will be watched like a hawk for productivity. Every single second of your day and what you do is tracked. They watch everything you do. If the sales you make off an Instagram post or a Facebook ad or whatever drop by one, even though you did everything right, it's always your fault and you're always punished for it. With e-commerce, for example, your slowest months are going to be somewhere in the springtime. When there's no holidays, no one's buying shit, so naturally things are slow. And so things would go down and we'd say, well, you know, compared to last year, we're up. But a D would never accept that. She would be like, no, you figure out a way to make it higher. And you have to keep making sure that month over month, you're doing better than the month before. Anytime you hit a quota, you immediately were jumped up to a higher goal and you were expected to reach that now. And if you didn't reach it, you were shamed and put on the spot. Like, why aren't you performing? Something's wrong with you. You know, I think that the lack of responsibility of, you know, let's say you work at a company and you had a bad day or a bad week, try to work it out. I think a lot of people give up too quickly. Then they leave their boss hanging. If the quotas were not met, you would literally be a ball of anxiety. I mean, your life would just be miserable. But when your stats were up, a D would actually treat you like a person again. Took the teamy team to a bowling bonding night as a reward for killing it on their goals in March. They'll give out fun rewards when the company stats are good, but the second the stats go down, they'll take all those fun rewards away. And if you're down, you are quote, out of ethics. God forbid your stats fall. You have to remedy to get your stats up. It doesn't matter that the internet went down or Instagram glitches for hours. It is your fault. You don't need to complain about those things because all of us are going through it and you need to put responsibility first. Scientology dictates that you are responsible for anything bad that happens to you, according to ex-Scientologist Mike Render. L. Ron Hubbard wrote that a soldier shot on the field of battle may blame the sniper, but he nevertheless had full responsibility, not only for being there and getting shot, but also for the sniper. There is no compromise with full responsibility. Mike Render says it's a concept that's used to control you. When something goes astray in Scientology, it is never the fault of the organization, he says. A former manager at Teamy for Influencers wrote that, there's zero consideration of the fact that we are in a pandemic and not many people have expendable income right now for tea and skincare. Those are just the facts. People are starting to see through influencers and not buy the items they shill, but influencer marketing is what built Teamy, so it has to work. If it isn't working, it's your fault and you will be blamed. 
I watched the CEO fire an entire department in one week. Management just acts like the firings didn't happen and that those people don't exist anymore. In a book that L. Ron Hubbard wrote called Brainwashing, he said, any organization which has the spirit and the courage to display inhumanity, savageness, brutality, and an uncompromising lack of humanity will be obeyed. Such a use of force is itself the essential ingredient of greatness. A former manager at Timi felt like how much money you make the CEO is the only thing that matters. That's all you were measured on. My statistic was not number of people that I helped. My statistic that I was measured on was number of dollars gotten in. Very simple, gross income. Now, a Scientology spokeswoman said that if this guy Levy focused on dollar amounts, then he violated church policy. But that's weird because Hubbard wrote a policy letter that said the statistic of this dude's position is the gross income of the org. All I ever did was see people worked into the ground to make money for Hubbard. And after a while, I just couldn't stomach it anymore. I had to leave. I don't know how this company expects to grow with such a high turnover rate, but maybe they should look into those stats and see where they could improve in treating their employees better and actually make them want to stay. If I lose, I lose a, a team member, like a personnel member, I, I'm pretty much my, my own worst critic. Man, I was, I was the reason, I messed it up. Mm -hmm. Am I even a good boss? Can, should I even be a CEO? I right. go through all those things. Now, Timmy has replied to critical reviews online by saying that as a startup company, we have high goals for our employees and we really want the best for them and for them to succeed. We do monitor our employees' stats and goals, but try not to micromanage. We just really want everyone to have the tools they need to succeed at Timmy. While it is never fun when stats fall, we are always looking for ways to reward when they are up and make fun games for the entire team. They also say that they didn't have to let anybody go during the pandemic and that they are currently expanding. But before you go applying for a job at Teamy, let's take a look at what you're gonna get paid. Teamy blends customer service representative hourly pay, 10 to $13 an hour. As soon as I got out of high school, I started working full time and I worked at a postcard company. But I was making 10, $11 an hour and I knew I knew that I could do something more with myself because I was never gonna be able to take care of my mom with $10 an hour, right. ever. A former social media manager at Teamy said, there was a bonus system for closing deals with social influencers and every now and then we would triple our goals, but then Adi would think the bonus was too big and randomly change the system and we wouldn't get our bonus. I had pay raises that I earned pushed back time and time again. The benefits are some of the worst I've seen ever three days of vacation for a full year. Scientologists don't believe in getting sick. They believe that if you do get sick, it means you've done something wrong in your life to cause that. And so if you were sick, Adi would look at your performance and emails and be like, why are you sick? Are you doing something bad against the company? And how she made you feel about being sick was worse than actually being sick. You're expected to work from home off the clock. I was personally asked to write pages of articles for them pro bono, and I was so sick of stuff like that I took it to HR. Thankfully, he saw a lawsuit waiting to happen and made them, you know, actually pay me for my time and work. You never sleep. I would be up until 2 a.m. sometimes, trying to make sure I sent enough emails to hit my goal. Now, Timmy's office manager has replied that we definitely don't encourage anyone to work outside of scheduled work hours, especially unpaid. We really want our employees to have a healthy work-life balance. But while we're talking about allegations of crazy labor practices, let me just mention that lawsuits against the Church of Scientology have piled up alleging forced labor. Scientology workers signed billion-year contracts, and many ex-members say they worked crazy long hours for little to no pay, even as children. Laura says she had to work excessive hours and was once asked to scrub out a dumpster. If I slept at all, it was in an office chair or on a floor. In his brainwashing propaganda book, L. Ron Hubbard wrote that refusal to let them sleep over many days and denying them adequate food then brings about an optimum state. Scientology has also admitted that its rules for workers include a ban on having children, censored mail, monitored phone calls, needing permission to have internet access, and being disciplined through manual labor. An expert in cults named Stephen Hassan says that Scientology checks all the boxes for being a cult. Yes, they control sleep. Yes, I, I don't have vacation. Yes, I have to ask permission for every major life decision. 
According to the New York Times, former staff members said they got sporadic paychecks of $50 a week at most working seven days a week. I was paid an average of 38 cents an hour. You're working from the moment you wake up from 8 to 9 till sometimes I was up until 4 or 5 a.m. And that's when I'm a minor. I was a minor the entire time I was there. But Scientology has argued because it's a church, its workers are technically ministers and so labor laws don't apply to them. It argues that members of the Sea Org are not employees, but volunteers who don't expect to be paid. This is very definitely off the record and don't use it. So maybe there are abuses. I wouldn't tell anybody else that. All right, before we get to our next set of reviews, I want to talk about a group of people that is very scary to Scientologists, and that is suppressive people. A suppressive person is a person who denies the right of others. The truth is, there are certain people who are actively trying to prevent the rest of us from doing well. Anybody who is criticizing Scientology or trying to suppress its power is called a suppressive person, or an SP for short, and the cult says these people have antisocial personalities. They are declared enemies of mankind, the planet, and all life. It means a person who is thoroughly evil beyond redemption and whose soul is doomed for eternity. Scientology says that 20% of the population is suppressive, but they can wreak havoc on everybody else. They say if you're around a suppressive person, you tend to be unhappier and you tend to get sick more. But the scariest part is that suppressive people could be anywhere and they can be very hard to detect. So, like, have you met an SP? <laughs> <laughs> While their actions are calculated to be destructive, Calm down, Em. They appear quite rational and they can be very convincing. Like when your friend tells you, girl, it sounds like you're in a destructive cult that was invented by a sci-fi writer who just wanted to get rich. That might make total sense in your mind, but your friend is actually trying to destroy you. Because suppressive people are so dangerous, it is really important to identify them. That could explain why people say there's a culture of snitching in Scientology. If you see somebody who is acting suppressive, as a Scientologist, you are obligated to tell the cult about it, and the way you do that is you write a knowledge report. The system of knowledge reports is not unlike the system used in a communist country in which everyone spies on everyone else. The KR is an early warning system of out-of-ethics behavior that could, if left unchecked, lead to your expulsion from Scientology and the utterly ruinous loss of your eternity. I had mentioned various things that I had some disagreements with. You know, to someone like, why is it so expensive? And then that person would write a report about that and send it in. It doesn't matter if it's your child, if it's your mother, your father, your husband. They're taught to believe that by turning you in, they are helping you. Another way the cult allegedly keeps tabs on people is by secretly recording them. Hubbard actually wrote a policy to have a mic that looks like a calendar or an ornament on the desks of Scientology salespeople. The person sitting there had no idea that the room was being listened into. I'm going to zoom in here because you can see down the end where I'm going to head to. We're going to go down and investigate what's actually in that birdhouse. And here is the camera. And the holes in the birdhouse are only facing away from the house. When I was working for the Scientology organization, I installed over 100 rooms that had two cameras and a microphone in them where people would get auditing. Is the camera obvious? No. no. This kind of surveillance is necessary because suppressive people are so dangerous. Scientology actually forbids you, if you're a Scientologist, from interacting with anybody who is a suppressive person. You're supposed to immediately disconnect from them, which means severing all ties from them. You don't let them call you, you don't let them write, you don't answer their letters. It doesn't matter if it's your best friend, your family member, or even if it's your own children. Liz Anderson hasn't seen her eldest child, Fiona, since 2005. She can't have contact with her daughter. It's broken families. It's destroyed families. The disconnection thing, it's like it's, it's there hovering. If you buck the system, this is where it will go. For anyone antagonistic or critical of Scientology, you have one of two choices, handle or disconnect. That's it. That's part of their policy. I mean, my son was declared because he wouldn't disconnect from his friend. I was declared and my husband was declared because we wouldn't disconnect from my son. Joe Reich was declared a suppressive person and expelled from the church. For a Scientologist being declared a suppressive person, it is a fate worse than death. 
This is the Church of Scientology's SP Declare. I have it laminated, and they usually don't even give them out anymore, but I got mine because I wanted it. Because anybody criticizing Scientology is a suppressive person, if you own a business and you hear one of your employees talking smack about your beliefs, as a good Scientologist, you should disconnect from them. Remember that woman who worked for the dentist who said her boss made her get Scientology training? When she warned new employees earlier this week, she claims she was fired. The manager called me downstairs and she said, well, today's your last day because we heard you were talking to people in the office about what goes on down there. I was told I had to resign. So with all that in mind, let's go back to Timmy and hear what former employees had to say. It is a culture of snitching on each other. Reporting your coworkers for not having their ethics in is encouraged, which creates an environment of fear. And that would make L. Ron Hubbard proud because he wrote that an element of terror must always be present on the part of those who would govern. If anyone hears you mention Scientology, you will have reports written on you. She has eyes and ears everywhere. They're constantly watching your inbox and what you're doing. If you are comfortable with the upper management going through your phone and asking you personal questions about your life, then honestly, you'll love it. Adi wanted unfettered access to your life. Like, if you didn't friend her on everything, she'd be like, well, why not? The only reason you don't want to be my friend on Instagram is obviously because you're hiding something from me and you're bad talking me or you're bad talking your job. The whole culture here was you have to have unwavering loyalty to Timmy and to Adi or you don't work here. You're either on board or you're not on board. There's nothing part of the way for me. <laughs> it's just... She put a nanny cam in the office right in front of all of our desks so that she could watch us whenever she wanted to. Former staff I interviewed also said that management knew that they'd said stuff that they don't remember sharing with management and that it was really creepy. I would search for things on my phone using the company's Wi-Fi and then Adi would somehow know about it. I can't be sure the office isn't bugged. Not sure that it is, but the fact that I have to be legitimately afraid about what I say at work regarding disagreeing with upper management or Scientology practices should say everything about the culture and sketchiness. You are not allowed to be critical of the organization. The word critical means enemy. Ultimately, I was fired for speaking up, but they said that it was a company decision that they were not allowed to discuss with me. If they labeled someone an enemy, there is no discussion. After they told me I was fired, they said, just so you know, the courses we offer here are optional. They're not required. And then they gave me an NDA and offered to pay me to sign it. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not signing that. And this reminds me of what Scientologists are supposed to do if they want to leave the cult. This involves signing voluminous waivers and gag orders, waiving any and all rights the person has to ever sue, and threatening the person with massive fines if they should ever speak out. Hey, you gotta sign these papers. Everybody's been good to you, right? You haven't witnessed anything. What about the boss? When all the forms are signed, the person is offloaded with $500 of severance pay. And I didn't have any other means to leave, and that's uh, why I actually ended up signing it. A former Timmy executive told me that when I came back from medical leave, I found out that Adi had gotten rid of my department, and it was shocking. It came out of nowhere. I thought everything was fine. She said, well, we did an investigation into your department and found that it wasn't profitable. And she said she didn't like the way I was doing things, but I was treated like I was a criminal. Once you were out, you were treated like you did not exist. So all of these people who I interacted with every day, who hugged me and told me that they loved me and cheered me on, went from that one day to the next day, literally acting like I wasn't a person. So it was devastating. This is business. I need to think analytically and I don't need to put my emotions, whether it's with an employee, whether it's with a client, you have to be professional. Former employees I spoke with also said that most of Timmy's hires are young females who are naive and impressionable. This was my first office position and it was a completely different world for me. My mind was very moldable. All the red flags that should have been there for me were not because I just didn't know any better. Looking back on it now that I'm older, I'm like, what the f was I doing? It was so mentally abusive. It was absolutely mentally abusive. I was treated like all the time. I would cry in the bathroom. I was literally destroyed every day at work. I was going in every day, crying in the car on the way there. A D made me feel worthless and like I wasn't capable of being successful. At one point, I got really suicidal working there. Scientologists who've come out of their group have reported some of the highest instances of suicidal and self-destructive tendencies afterwards. 
I think if there was one thing I took away from it, it was just this fear of working for a Scientologist business again. Honestly, terrified is a great word. I just never want to relive what I went through. And because Scientology has such a strong presence in Florida, I definitely do a lot more research before taking a job now. Every job I've gone into since then, I've been afraid of allowing myself to really commit because I feel like something bad could happen at any time. I had put all of this time and energy and effort into Timmy. I worked so hard for them. I poured my soul into this. And then it was like it was all for nothing because they treated me like this. And because I had been so emotionally invested in this company, when that crumbled, I lost myself. And it was extremely, extremely hard. I had never experienced that level of depression. I thought back on all of the interactions I had with employees, with customers, how shady it was and how gross it was that we took advantage of people. I didn't realize that's what we were doing at the time. I genuinely thought like we're helping people and we're making them better and we're healing them. And you know, once a week, Adi would have us read these customer testimonials and these people would have these sob stories of how, you know, I don't have to go to the doctor anymore and I'm no longer on my blood pressure medication. It was such emotional manipulation. And this reminds me of how Scientology likes to flex all of their accomplishments hardcore for their members to show them just how much good all of their time and effort is doing in the world. The worldwide impact of LRH as a humanitarian exceeds any other humanitarian effort on Earth. 32,000 criminals and juveniles rehabilitated. 80% have never returned to jail. So if you had any doubts, which I did, when you hear some of these statistics, you're like, oh my God, we are changing the world. When you're in it, you don't realize how bad it is. So now, not only do I have to mourn how I was treated at Timi, but then also that I personally introduced Timi's products to all these people in my life. I had so many friends and family members who had spent their hard-earned money and tried these products because they were supporting me. I felt so terrible about it after that. You put everything into it. In the last two, three years, I realized, what the f I have just given my life away to a cult. And I'm sure I was responsible for some of it. I want to say to them, I'm sorry. <laughs> that place has scarred so many people. And if my info can help prevent someone else from potentially going through the same, I don't want to let fear hold me back. If I can do something to keep some, someone else from getting hurt, I'm more than willing to do it. A former Timmy employee that I spoke with said that one ex-staffer tried to get an attorney, but the lawyer turned them down because they didn't want to go up against Scientology. We've even reached out to local news stations and no one answers us. I left in 2005 and I've had a, a good four years of experience in being followed by private investigators. I was worried about what they would do to my career, but ultimately leaving was the most amazing thing I could have ever done. It was the most freeing feeling. I got outside, it was like, what everybody takes for granted, to me it was like, oh my God, I was free. I also asked former employees what kind of boss they thought Adi would be if she were not a Scientologist. A former social media manager at CME said, I think that's the saddest part because I do think she has really tender qualities to her when she tries to be a normal human. Another former Timmy employee said that you would see these moments where you're like, hey, there's actually a person under there. An ex Timmy marketing expert said, if you take the Scientology part out of it, she's a good person and she's a good businesswoman. But speaking to somebody that's been brainwashed that much is really difficult. You can shake a pretty new Scientologist that way. But if they've been in Scientology a long time, they, they don't think Scientology is their universe and so they would just refuse to believe it. A former Timmy chat rep said, I think it's really unlikely that she'll ever leave Scientology. I think she sees it as a core part of her success, and I think if she were ever to give it up or consider giving it up, she might think she was going to fail without it. If I succeeded, it was because of Scientology. If I failed, it was because I wasn't doing Scientology. A former Timmy executive said, Scientology is so ingrained in her personality and is too much a part of her life by this point. She would stand to lose way too much, especially now that she's had a baby and her husband's family is like Scientology royalty. She would lose everything if she left. 
Okay, now by this point, with everything that we know about Simi, the shady marketing tactics, the FTC lawsuit, the Scientology connections, and all those employee reviews, you would think that no big brand would wanna to touch them, but just wait because you're not going to believe how much love Timmy gets from huge retailers. Timmy Blends is in Target stores, it's in Ulta Beauty stores, it's sold by Walmart and by CVS Pharmacy, and y'all, there are so many big name retailers that are not only profiting from this very problematic brand, but they're allowing Timmy to make money that is allegedly enriching a dangerous cult. But Aji did not always have such an easy time growing Timmy Blends because she said after she started her company initially, no retail stores were gonna sell her product and so she had no other choice but to sell it online. It was the only option for a 23 year old trying to start a wellness business. I wasn't a doctor, I, I was a certified personal trainer but I didn't have any other credentials that would get me in the door somewhere. Guys, look, we're in Target, look. Your amazing support is what allows us to get into stores like Ulta, like Francesca's. And she's right. Big retailers would not support a brand if consumers didn't support a brand. But consumers need to be informed about what they're supporting. So please, please, I hope you'll share this documentary. And again, especially if you are a member of a group or subreddit that is about wellness or weight loss or Scientology or some other relevant audience, then sharing this documentary in that group is probably the best way that you can help it get engagement and help tell the algorithm guides that they should serve it to more people so that it can help more people. I also want to remind y'all that I did invite Timmy Blends, Adi, and her mom, Sari, to participate in this video. And even though Timmy told me Adi is not available because she's on maternity leave, I told them that the invitation to interview Adi absolutely still stands. I would still love the chance to ask Adi about the allegations in this video. So if Adi ever wants to share her side of the story, she is definitely welcome to reach back out to me and I will update y'all in a future video with her answers. And if you made it all the way to the end of this guzzle episode, then add the hashtag empty mug to your comment. I feel like I'm left with just my best friends right now. I appreciate y'all so much. And if you want to see more episodes of Guzzle where I spill the tea on shady money makers, then subscribe and hit the notification bell because I only release videos about once a month and that'll make sure that YouTube doesn't forget that you like me. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.